Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Open Day at William Anglis. My name is David Kerr. I'm a teacher here. I teach wine units, bar units, coffee units, anything to do with uh, restaurant service and uh, probably drinks. I'm a drink specialist. Certainly wine is my passion. So what we've done is organized a little food and wine matching activity. So as you can see in front of you, there is uh, three wines and um, there is a little tasting plate of three tastes of food. On the left is uh, zucchini and goat's cheese fritter. In the middle is spiced tuna sashimi with creme fraiche and then duck confit on the right. Uh, we also have non-alcoholic wine just to make it even more interesting for those people who are under 18 or prefer not to drink alcohol during the day. So, the reasoning behind food and wine matching, you want to basically match intensity of flavor in the food and the wine. So subtle, delicate food with subtle, delicate wine, rich, full-bodied food with rich, full-bodied wine. For example, if the food is acidic, you need to have wine with more acid than the food, otherwise the wine tastes like water. Food and wine matching, the structural components of the wine are really important factors in getting the food and wine matching right. That's um, acid, alcohol, uh, and in red wine, tannins as well. Tannins are the, is that mouth drying sensation that, um, uh, that refreshes the palate after you've been eating food. How I do food and wine matching tasting. I smell and taste the wine first, then I try the food and then I try them together. It's a bit gross when you put some food in your mouth and sip the wine and chew it together, but that's a really good way to work, uh, to decide whether it's a, a harmonious combination or not. So if you pick up your first glass, we have for the alcoholic wines, a Cunala Pinot Gris uh, from South Australia. And how I taste wine, I give it a, well, I look at the color first, I give it a swirl, pop my nose in the glass, and I'm thinking about uh, fruit characters firstly when I smell the wine. So it should have some, um, you know, crunchy green pear characters, a whisper of sort of tropical fruit in the alcoholic one. Uh, and then you taste the wine to judge the acidity, whether there's sugar. You actually can't smell acid, you can't smell sugar, so you have to put it in your wine to assess those structural components, and in red wine, the tannin. So if you could all try wine number one and try the goat's cheese fritter. Goat's cheese is notoriously hard to match with food. It's quite pungent, uh, whereas this is a fritter and it's fried, so I've chosen something with some crisp acidity to cut through the oil as well. It sort of makes your tongue tingle. So it's very crisp and refreshing. Uh, really, really good food and wine combinations. You can have great wine, great food, and then when you combine them, it's an outstandingly sensual experience when they work. In my whole life, I've had maybe five experiences that just blew me away. Food and wine combinations where great German Riesling, lightly poached fish with a hollandaise sauce, and together, it's just, Wow, it's just sensational. And when those occasions happen, it's worth trying to seek out more of them because it's, um, it really brings joy. Life's too short not to have joy, in my opinion. All right, let's forge on. So number two, um, the alcoholic version is a Fiano. Non-alcoholic is a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, actually. Uh, so uh, even though it's non-alcoholic, it smells and tastes like a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. I was surprised. Um, so that's quite herbaceous with some, with some tropical fruit characters. But the Fiano, it's probably similar in some aspects to the first wine, crisp, refreshing, but it's got um, a more savory, almost uh, nutty uh, flavor as well. So that would be, um, and with something that has a little bit more texture and a little bit more flavor in this uh, spice tuna, I thought this one would work. Have a try, let me know what you think.
Now I'd like you to move on and try my favourite thing in the whole world is duck and pinot noir. Duck is oily and has an earthy character, a gamey character. Pinot noir has nice high acidity to cut through the oil of duck and it also has a gamey flavour as well. The alcoholic wine is Pinot Noir. The non-alcoholic is a Cabernet, but because it doesn't have alcohol, it's a similar palette weight as the Pinot. The Pinot Noir has a silky mouthfeel. It's got silky tannins. It's got high acidity that cuts through the richness of the duck. And it has a similar palette weight. What I wanted to just do is to give you a little bit of an overview of food and wine matching and to um, talk about what we do at William Anglis with our courses. We like people to have a passion for wine and food and take that out into the broader food and beverage sector in Melbourne and uh, hopefully use what they learn here at Anglis uh, to uh, you know, design and be involved in beautiful restaurants in the future. The duck and the pinot, are we enjoying that? Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan, big fan. All right, well, once you have finished the appetizer, we will magically clear that and then we'll bring out your uh, pre-selected main course option and our chefs out the back are working diligently to get the right food organized, so Wonderful. Thank you very much for your attention and um, I, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day here at William Anglis.